This is a sweet speaks. Is constitution the same thing as liberty? I am here with uh, J.K. Baltusen, uh, a Norwegian monarchist who might be able to give us a few insights on this question. Uh, he, has, he has written one of the chapters in this book and he is also the editor. The title is Grundlov og Frihet, Turtledur eller Erkefiender, and it means uh, Constitution and Liberty, Turtle Doves or Arch Enemies. Uh, so maybe we should start with uh, the question of democracy versus monarchy. What's, what is your take on this? Well, d democracy is uh, basically mob rule. And uh, we, we've seen that uh, democracy has uh, given us <coughs> states and governments with uh, reach and size that the rulers of old would uh, never have dreamt of. So your take is that, uh, for instance, the the kings of Europe in the ancient regime would never dream of imposing the kind of taxation or the kind of regulations that uh, governments inferior elected by the people are doing now. That is correct. Uh, okay. Or, or at least uh, there would be a much less tendency for it. I, it's not possible to say that they absolutely would not, but uh, there are tendencies in the systems that uh, would make, the, for all practical purposes, the, the likelihood of that they would do it uh, is, uh, is, is nothing that we uh, could consider seriously. Right. Does this have anything to do with the argument uh the caretaker versus ownership argument that some monarchists use? Yeah, well, yes, the, the long-term uh, perspective of a monarch is important. The, uh, the argument of uh, <coughs> buying vo that democracy is a system where the politicos buy votes uh, for other people's you have one group of voters, right? And uh, the politicos buy votes of these people for other people for money from another group, right? Right. Uh, and and you also have the uh, the confusion of uh, the rulers and the the ruled, mm. and uh, when there's when there's when you don't have. Uh, some rulers here and the rule here and a distinct uh, difference between those uh, the the, uh, the system of government tends uh, to be uh, uh, to grow much mm. more right. because uh, the, the the ruled think that they are the rulers and it gives uh, an extra legitimacy to uh, the form of government right so if you look at the title of, of your book, does constitution equal liberty? The short answer is no. The short answer is that uh, uh, constitution and liberty are not lovebirds, but arch enemies. So instead of a constitution, how would you make sure to have a checks and balances in a system or maybe you're not uh, maybe checks and balances are not your problem i don't know well, well you you could have a constitution uh, that that gives liberty to to some extent but the modern constitutionalism has some uh, severe problems with it that uh, that undermines liberty in, in which way does the norwegian constitution undermine liberty here in norway well, first of all, because we have democracy. And by democracy you mean mob rule? Yeah. More or less? Yeah. And we, we have one, one author uh, in, in the book who, who says that uh, the talk about uh, minorities having all sorts of rights mm. is basically rhetoric. Right. Right, this sounds nice. Yeah. So, 
I am getting the feeling that you prefer monarchy much more than democracy. How, how, what, what kind of monarchy do you prefer? How do you define monarchy? Because in theory, Norway is a monarchy, Sweden is a monarchy, Denmark is a monarchy. But the king of Norway does not have much, does not have much of a say and the king of Sweden has nothing to say. Yeah, but they are monarchies in name only, or minos, mm. and uh, there, there is, there's been a revolution, and uh, lots of time has passed, and uh, you, you can't just reinstate the old classical monarchy and uh, think that all will be well. That might be a difficult pill to... Well, it might be difficult to sell that to people, but do you have any idea? Are there things that you, that would be needed to restore from, from old times, and how, how would we do that? Well, f first of all, we, we need to spread ideas uh, about... especially about democracy and also about the benefits of, of monarchy and uh, we also have a couple of models for monarchy that are uh, working in this day and age in Europe the, yes. in the principalities of Liechtenstein and Monaco right and and we need to uh, to, to stress and emphasize uh, the benefits of, of these models and, and show the world that uh, we actually have functioning monarchies with regal powers in place in today's world and which are not places of tyranny and uh, hells on earth. Yeah, actually I read a book uh, some 20 years ago about the kings and queens of England and Scotland and the author wrote in the preface, tyrants should beware of kings. Uh, but what I was thinking about, in your chapter in this book, a chapter called uh, Demokrati är icke frihet, Democracy is not freedom, or Democracy is not liberty, you point out how democracy turns into, a, into an ideology, which you call democratisme, democratism. Yeah, it, it's... Uh... A phrase that I've I've learned from uh, the old uh, Austrian monarchist uh, Eric von Kühnertedin. Right, and interestingly enough for me, who is a confessing Christian, is how you point out how the government in Norway, just like they did in Sweden and probably in other countries too, are trying to democratize the old state church, when the inferior are cutting the ties with the old state church and turning them into a free church. In practice they tell them, but you, you must have democracy. Why on earth should they force uh, the Church of Norway to have a democracy? I mean, why should they force anyone to have democracy? Should they force uh, a privately owned hotel to have democracy? Because it's uh, the, the real religion of our day. So. Democracy is a buzzword, and if you just use this word, you get away with anything. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. And that's an interesting perspective. I'm, I wonder, but what about, uh, for instance, the United States? They have been a republic, at least in name, since they were founded. Uh, but I know that they have changed some of... Uh, the Senate used to be a Senate. Now it's not really a Senate. It's it's elected by popular vote, just like the House of Representatives. Yeah, it was. It started out uh, being uh, representatives of of the states. Yes. The states represent the states. The Senate represents the states. Yes. And the House of Representatives re represents the people. Yeah. So maybe they need to go back on that that point at least. Yeah, I believe that's uh, Amendment number 16. That might be the right one. I have heard something about that. Uh, I think maybe... But, I but the problem was, uh, the problem can't just be solved by, by uh, repealing the amendment. Because uh, 
prior to the amendment, they had states had started uh, doing popular elections mm. for their senators, and right. uh, if you just repeal the amendment, uh, you might end up with the same situation anyhow. Mm. Okay. Um, I like uh, Peter Hitchens. He he said in a debate. Uh, he was arguing the case for the House of Lords, the way it used to work. And his argument was something like the following. The people who ended up in the House of Lords, uh, they were not elected. They just inherited their places. I mean, the, not the spiritual lords, not the bishops, but uh, the noblemen. They got there because they happened to be, they happened to inherit the lordship from their father or something like this. Uh, and they were there for life. But, on the brighter side of this, they did not have to worry about what the popular opinion was. They could decide whatever they wanted. And if you are a democratist, this sounds terrible, right? But uh, the po Mr. Hitchens' point was that they could actually make sane deci decisions based on the fact that they didn't have to care about popular opinion. Yeah, it's a little like your the, your model. Yeah, and, and, that, and the, the British system is initially, or was initially, a system a mixed system where you had the monarchy, and the the House of Lords, yes. and then the Commons as the democratic element. Yes. But these days, everything has to be democratic. Right. Right. So, so so that's where we're at now, and question is how to how to change this yeah we we have to start by changing people's minds because if you just say this, change the system or when you have a culture of democratism that won't work now that's the same thing as in ma many different issues if you just state an opinion without first trying to change the minds of hearts of people they will just say that you're crazy yeah but but we started off a little today, and we'll see if we can continue this conversation at some later point. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming on. And uh, Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. And uh, until next time, have a nice day, and God bless.